Hello, today is uh, July the 19th. This is the Reach Out Ministry from Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me in Psalms chapter 40. We're going to read verses 1 through 10. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to hear me and hear my cry. So the good Lord, you know, when we call upon him in uh, faith and our belief, he's always there to hear us. I have a reference from this first verse that's found over in uh, Romans in chapter 5. And it's verses 1 through 4. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our justification isn't anything we do, but it's by our faith that we might have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It all comes down through Christ Jesus. Verse 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And uh, by having faith in God is how we gain access to him. Not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. To be a child of God doesn't mean you're not going to have trials and tribulations and hardships from time to time, but it says through our tribulations, the more we lean on God, is the more patience we will have. It tells us that tribulation worketh patience, and patience worketh uh, experience and experience hope. We have the hope in our Lord and Savior that tribulations work of patience and patience experience and spirit experience in hope. Back in Psalms 40, in verse 2, he says, He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And uh, patience simply means that we have the ability to bear trials through without the grumbling or complaining. And then in Psalms 27, verse 5, 27, verse 5, Psalms. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me up on the rock. You know, he told Peter, he said, who do the people say that I am? And Peter told him, well, you're, some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead, or Elijah. And he said, that's who the people say I am, but who do you say that I am? And he said, I say that thou art. Christ, the Son of God. If you'll understand this, it'll help you understand a lot about the Bible. When he refers to himself as Son of God, he's talking to believers because they see him as the Son of God. But if he refers to himself as the Son of Man, he's talking to non-believers. So when he asked Peter, who do the people say that I am? And they say, well, you're John the Baptist. They didn't see him as Christ. They saw him as just another being. And then he made it personal when he asked Peter, well, who do you say that I am? And he said, I say that thou art the Christ. In other words, the anointed one, the son of God. And he told him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. It's by the spirit. And it's by the Holy Spirit that reveals to us if we know Christ is our Savior, that we know he is the Son of God. He's more than, He is the Son of Man because he was born of Mary, 
but we see him in the light of being God's only begotten son. If you will, in Psalms 2 now, in uh, verse 12, he says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. So if you put in your trust in Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we will be blessed. Doesn't say we won't go through tribulations, as he's already mentioned, that through tribulations we have experience and hope. So we will have tribulations, but our trust is in him and in the Life after our being here on this earth, when we pass from this walk of life, we will have eternal glory with our Lord and with our Savior forever and ever, everlasting. I want to mention this to you. In the Old Testament, over 150 times, he says trust. So a lot of times here, like he says, put their trust in him in the Uh, Verse 12 here, he refers in the Old Testament trust, but in the New Testament, he uses the word faith and belief. And all this means to take a refuge. It means to roll on. We roll all our cares upon him. He bears our sorrows. He says that we also lean on him and that we are to wait for him. We wait upon our Lord, and we're waiting and watching for the return of our Lord and Savior, and we all believe that this will come about very, very soon. Some of the things that we're seeing going on in the world today, uh, I've never in my life seen where we've had to wear masks to go into a store or, or a public place like we're having to do now, mandatory. And uh, it's all because of the coronavirus that's going around. And I think this is just one more sign that we're ever getting closer to the coming of our Lord and our Savior. Back in uh, verse uh, 3, he tells us here that he will put a new song In my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. If we live for our Lord and Savior day by day, people will recognize there's something different about us, and it might cause them to trust in the Lord also. Put our trust and faith upon him. Then in verse 4, he said, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. We have so-called ministers today throughout the ages of time that have told a lot of lies from the pulpit, and people have been believing what they were saying was true, and it turns out that it was all a bunch of lies. I'm not here to lie to you. I'm here to tell you the truth. We saw this back in 1993 when uh, Vernon Howe, also known as uh, David Koresh, he, he had his followers believing a bunch of lies that's not in the Bible. He took the wives of all the men that were in his church and made them his wife. That's not scriptural. He was full of lies and full of the devil. And here I am to tell you today that I was called into the ministry. Uh, At the age I had the calling at 20 years old, and my fear of God prevents me from telling people lies. Because if I lie to you, I am responsible for what I teach and for what I preach. And I do not, I do not, I do not 
want to have anybody's uh, sin upon me because I lied to them. If you will, back in uh, chapter 40 of Psalms, verse 5, Many, O Lord my God, are they that wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up or in order uh, uh, to thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than I can be numbered. There's no way I can describe to you all the wonderful glories that God has in store for us. I can only tell you a part of it because I think part of the mystery of God and when we get to heaven will not really be totally revealed until we get there. Verse 6 says, Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened burnt offerings and sin offerings thou hast not required. Now, in the Old Testament, they were required to offer a sacrifice to roll their sins forward for another year. But then in a year's time, when it came to be time for another sacrifice to have their sins rolled forward, it caused many of the people to remember the sins of their past. I want you to know when God forgives you, he forgives you. And old Satan will try to tell you from time to time, he'll bring up something you did that was wrong or something that you said you wish you hadn't have said. He will bring it up, your past, to try to tell you you're at fault. But God tells us he forgives us as far as the east is unto the west, never to remember them against us ever again. If you have your Bibles, look with me in Romans chapter 10, verses 3 through 10. Romans 10, 3 through 10. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We can't be righteous in God's eyes. We can only be righteous through Christ Jesus, for whom we have believed upon. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. He's not saying that the laws that God gave Moses on Mount Sinai, all the Ten Commandments are not good, but he's telling us that we're not under the law, we're under grace now by the blood of Jesus Christ. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But if the righteousness which is of Faith speaketh on this wise, is of faith speaketh uh, not into the heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead? But what it saith is, The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So the word of God is not just something we hear. It goes into our heart. And if we will trust in the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all our strength and all of our soul, this is how we serve the Lord. Verse 9 says that if we shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's one of my favorite verses in all of God's word. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in the heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart 
man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So here he's telling us we're not under the law, we're under the grace. And it's by our faith that we have in Jesus Christ that we have everlasting life. Back in Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. So it's not the law of Moses, but it's the laws that you've written within your heart to believe in Christ Jesus as your Savior that gets us into God's glory. He said, I delighted to do thy will, O my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not reframed my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. He says, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and the truth from in the great congregation. That is what a true minister or anybody that's a child of God. If God reveals something to you, you don't want to hide it in your heart and keep it a secret. You want to share what God revealed to you that others may see, that others may know. I don't pretend to tell you in any form or fashion that God has revealed things to me, and I think, well, I'll just keep this to myself. It'll be between me and God in our little secret. No, anything God reveals to me I want to pass it on to all my brothers and sisters in Christ and share that glorious revelation that I've had. Or maybe you shared a revelation that you have had that makes us truly closer, not only to God, but it draws us together as a body of baptized believers. I want to read to you one more verse or two. Acts 20, verses 20 and 21. He says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable for for you. Paul is saying here, I didn't keep anything back that would be profitable to you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly And from house to house, wherever he went, publicly he declared what God had revealed to him, and he held back nothing. Verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so privileged to have the loving kindness of our Lord and Savior, and that we can share our hearts, beliefs, our testimonies, whatever God gives us, that we can share it with our congregation and our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that increases our faith. And, you know, I hear a lot of people say, well, you don't have to go to church to serve God. No, you really don't have to. But he says, forsake not to gather yourselves together. And this is partly why, that you hold back nothing that's profitable to you. You cannot share your testimony or what God has done for you if you don't come to church and spread what God, the love of God that he's given to you and share it with others. I thank you and God bless you.
Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be a sin, the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. Could my zeal no rest but no? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. While I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages, clap for me, let me hide.